So welcome to another uh, Magnet Seminar. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us uh, this morning or this evening. Thank you very much to our speaker for being up quite late this evening to uh, give us a, a presentation on this uh, time zone. Um, we're going to follow the normal sort of magnets format. So we'll have a sort of 25 to 30 minute uh, presentation. We kindly ask uh, that you keep your microphones muted during that time. At the end, we'll have a chance um, for a sort of 10 to 15 minute um, question and discussion session. Um, you can raise your hand through Zoom and we'll invite you to unmute and ask your question or feel free to type it into the chat and uh, I can read it out um, um, for the speaker. And we've got a little bit of time at the end as well if anybody wants to have a, a catch up and, and a bit of a chin wag. Uh, so this morning, I'm really pleased to say that we've got uh, Natalia Pasqualon um, from the University of Hawaii, who will be talking about um, organ organ um, dating and paleomagnetic records from Trinidad Island. So I will pass over to you, Natalia. All right. So aloha, everybody. Oh, good night for me. Good morning for you. <laughs> Um, so Craig said that I'm based at the University of Hawaii. I'm taking my PhD here, but I'm also taking a concurrent PhD at the Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul, which is the federal university of Rio Grande do Sul in the south of Brazil. And this work is actually a uh, part of my PhD there in Brazil and not the one that I'm doing in Hawaii, which is more volcanology, um, towards volcanology. So I'm very happy to be presenting this because I'm about to conclude my PhD in Brazil. And I'm also, I would like to acknowledge before I start all of my co-authors and my supervisors, Jair, Jairo Sadia, Evandro Lima, and Clayton Scherer, and all the other co-authors that are more paleo, paleomagnetists that really helped me throughout all of this. So today, Let's, oops. I'm going to talk to you about Trindade Island, uh, the new volcanological data, argon, argon ages, and paleomagnetic record that we have. So first of all, volcanic stratigraphy is a fundamental tool to unravel the eruptive history of ancient and recent volcanic terrains and for hazard assessment in active volcanic areas. However, it can be challenging because of the great variety of processes and products that occur in volcanic terrains. Thus, we need a multi-proxy approach uh, for an accurate interpret interpretation of the deposits, stratigraphic relations, and the reconstruction of the volcanic field. So my goal uh, in my PhD in Brazil is to propose a revised stratigraphic framework from Trindade, including the lito, chrono, magnetic, and chemistratigraphy, but in this presentation today, I'm going to just uh, go through some of the aspects, as, as I mentioned before. I'm going to give you some of the volcanological context so that you can understand, better understand the stratigraphy, uh, talk to you about the new ages in the paleodirectional data that we acquired to do the magnetostratigraphy. But in the end, I'm also including my final dissertation, an isotropy of magnetic susceptibility gamma spectrometry, uh, geochemistry of the units to um, have a final chronostratigraph stratigraphic chart for the island. But why is this work important and why this island, right? So let me present to you Trindade Island. This island is located um, in the South Atlantic Ocean at 1,200 kilometers far from the Brazilian coast. It's the uh, furthest po point from the coast from the Brazilian coast. And it's part of the submarine chain, which is called the Vitória Trindade chain, which subdivides two important hydrocarbon basi basins in Brazil, the Espírito Santo and Campos. So it's important to investigate what is around these basins. And uh, also the location of the island is crucial for understanding the evolution of the geomagnetic field uh, for, during the last four million years. The island has started to form it around 4 million years ago. Uh, but the entire chain, uh, which you can see here, this is like a bathymetric um, map of the, the chain. And the chain started to form actually inland through a hotspot or plume. Um, we don't know for sure. But 
uh, it has around 85 to 90 million years inland. And then the Abrolhos shelf that you can see here, it's about 40 million years. And it goes all up to Trindade in and Martin Vaz, which started to form at 4 million years and lasted until a couple of thousand years. So this is the island. It has an, it's very tiny, it's 13 square kilometers. The highest elevation is 1600 meters. Uh, and it's very hard to get access there. So to get to go to field work, we have to request access to the Brazilian Navy. And once you go there, you have to spend two months, one or two months without any sheep around because you go with their sheep and then the sheep comes back to shore. So we've done a couple of expeditions um, to collect all the data set that we have now. But this is the geological map of the island. And as I mentioned to you, it started to form at around 4 million years ago, forming the Trindade complex, which is the gray, this gray and dark green units right here. And then it was followed by the Desejado sequence or formation now, uh, which is this central green here, the, this green, the central part of the island. And these two oldest units, they are of phonolithic composition. And then the three youngest units, the Morro Vermelho formation, the Valado formation, and the Paredon volcano, which is the last erupted Brazilian volcano, they all are monogenetic centers of melanifelinitic composition. So silica undersaturated uh, and very alkaline. Well, here are some pictures of our uh, field work. So we did three campaigns. We started in 2016, then 2017, and then 2018. Um, here, this is me, this is my colleague, Fernando. We sampled 17 polymagnetic sites and in, including to, in total, giving us 400 and 504 specimens. And um, we have also conducted a series of stratigraphic logs, collected samples, a bunch of samples for geochemistry, geochronology. Um, the geochronology we've conducted at the Oregon State University lab and through Argon Argon Ages with done 13 experiments, but in the end, we end up using only six for stratigraphic purposes. And the magnetic mineralogy characterization and the paleomagnetic data we acquired in the USP-MAG, which is the paleomagnetic lab in the Universidade de São Paulo in Brazil, which, um, so in which we conducted the thermomagnetic curves the IRM curves, hysteresis uh, loops, will obtain the hysteresis loops in the, the forks, and the alternating fuse and thermal demagnetization. And then to treat the data, we use the software's Curval, Forcinel, and Remosoft. So now I'm going to walk you through the latest stratigraphy and geochronology. So I already talked a little bit about the units, but so that you know, uh, a little bit more of the work that I that we've been doing um, in this image. Well, first, the Trindade complex was previously was dated by Cordani at the, and collaborators in the seventies through potassium argon, and then Pires revisited the ages through argon argon, and the ages acquired range from three point nine to two point six million years, and here you can see that there are some acronyms in these pictures. These are the little faces that we defined, which um, gives us the process of emplacement of these rocks or formation of the deposits. And then when we associate these little faces, we can interpret the environment or uh, the conditions of volcanism. So we interpret the rocks from Trindade complex as being the subvolcanic bodies that um, were responsible to feed the volcanism in Trindade in pyroclastic deposits that were generated by the interaction of magma and water through a phreatomagmatic eruption or Circeum. And this unit is well dated, so we didn't obtain new ages for it. 
Then, the desejado formation, which ranges from 2.6 to 1.5 million years, which was dated by Cordani using potassium and argon, um, we described as uh, containing pahoehoe flows, distal pyroclastic deposits, and proximal pyroclastic deposits. And when we associate the lithophages, we interpret as this volcanism as being generated by a volcanic eruption style. And unfortunately for this um, unit, we were unable to sample Pelumag uh, samples because it was very hard to get there with the, the driller, with the drill. Um, and there was no water available. The way up there is extremely sketchy. So unfortunately, we didn't acquire samples, um, Pelumag samples for this unit. Then, Let's go to the monogenetic centers. The mole vermelho formation uh, is composed mostly by a su succession of uh, uh, lava flows, and then it is succeeded by pyroclastic deposits. And there is a scoria conchu, which suggests to us that this was formed by an alternation of Strombolian and Hawaiian eruptive styles. And it was first dated by Cordani um, in the 70s again by potassium argon, as in, in his paper. In their paper, it, uh, they only mention like it's younger than 260,000 and 70,000 years. So we acquired new ages for this unit. And now we can see that these flows that have this age, they are from the intermediate portion of the Movie Mill unit. And these other ones are from the top. The flows from the base, we didn't acquire ages, but we do have the paleomag data and we could obtain relative ages for these flows through the paleomag. I'm going to come to this later on, but just so that you are aware. And the Velado formation, which was previously thought to be one million year old by Valencia Mendia, potassium argon, uh, it is exclusively made of uh, uh, lava flows in agglutinate deposits, which are proximal pyroclastic deposits. And our new ages reveal that the lowest boundary for this unit is not 1 million year, but instead it's about 490. And unfortunately, the upper boundary, uh, we got like a very huge error. So it's not reliable, but at least we know that's like uh, younger than thought before. And then the Paridon volcano, which is the last erupted Brazilian volcano, was dated by Argon, using Argon Argon by Pires in 2016. And the age that they got was 250 plus or minus 190,000 years. So it was not so accurate. And for us, for Paleomag, it wouldn't be so helpful too. So we redated this unit. And it was, it's very similar to the Morro Vermelho formation with a success, succession of AA lava flows in pyroclastic deposits interleaved. And there is a scoria cone, which is partially preserved, which also suggests for us a Hawaiian Strombolian eruptive style, purely magmatic. And the new ages for this volcano uh, ranges from 216 up to 60,000 years. So that's pretty neat. We were very happy with the new ages. And now we can go towards the, the paleo bag, which you guys should be most interested in. So first, I'm going to walk you through the magnetic mineralogy. So the Trindade complex, the oldest unit, the phonolithic necks, they are composed of sanidine, uh, phenocris, dioxide, and in the SEM, images, we can see here in letter C uh, that there are magnetites, while in the Trindade complex dike, which is melanifelinitic, the Morro Vermelho, Valado, and the Paredão Volcano A flows, they are composed by this phenocris, this reabsorbed olivine phenocris, and titanium magnetite instead, which are more widespread than the magnetites from Trinidad complex neck, and they also seem to be tinier. 
But to confirm this, of course, we conducted the thermomagnetic curves. So we can see here that the Trindade complex next and the dike, they show a drop in susceptibility at around 500 uh, Celsius, suggesting the presence of magnetite, while the other uh, uh, lava flows of uh, melanifinity composition, they have a, a wide variety of drops in susceptibility with temperature, and uh, which suggests for us possibly hematite here in the highest temperature or titanium magnetite or magmite. So we've also done the hysteresis in IRM. And for the samples on the left, all these four on the left, we can see that the RRM curves saturate at fields lower than 0.3 teslas, uh, suggesting a low coercivity, the presence of a low coercivity magnetic mineral. While these two samples here on the right, which belong to the Morro Vermelho Formation and the Paredão Volcano, they um, need a, a, high, a stronger field to reach saturation. So possibly there is like a mix of high and low coercivity magnetic minerals, hematite and titanium magnetite. The four diagrams, they suggest here for Trindade complex, again, we can see a uh, dispersion along the y-axis, suggesting a multi-domain uh, behavior. While for the melanifelinitic lavas, they have a vortex to a single domain when there's like a more, um, dis a higher dispersion on the x, -x um, axis. And the paleomagnetic data, so, Right now, for the Trindade complex, we have sample phonolytic necks with 2.8 and 2.9 million years. And we can see here in the demag demagnetization diagrams that they easily dem demagnetized through alternating fields. Uh, we've run some uh, thermal demag too, just to confirm and to check if this was accurate. But we focus with the thermal demag in the ones that were not uh, getting a good response with the alternating fields. But for Trinidadi complex, we got these sites. We measure seven sites, all of them, uh, except by one that I can talk more better later. They have normal polarity and a declination that's like towards north and an inclination of 49 degrees around 49. This is the average for all the sites of this unit. Um, then the Morro Vermelho formation has two distinct, distinct behaviors. There's one site, which is this TRGF06 that presents uh, a transitional, we interpret as a transitional field because the declination, we measure 12 speci speci specimens and four of them are of um, reverse polarity and the other ones are of normal polarity. And this is the site of 76, uh, 760,000 years, which is close to the Bruins Matayama transition. So this site we interpret as transitional. And then the other sites of Mo Vermelho, they all have normal polarities. And the um, these ones are the ones that are, well, I'm going to show you later in the, the final stratigraphic chart, but keep this in mind. So only one side with transitional field for the Mo Vermelho and now the others present normal polarity. Uh, the Valado formation, also presents a normal polarity. We measured four sites with, uh, they all had a very good response to the um, alternating fields demag. And the mean site declination is of around 16 and the inclination of minus, uh, it's a uh, normal 41 degrees. In the Paridon Volcano, which was really hard to acquire um, very good alternating field response. So 
we, we made the thermal demand and we measured only two sites, which have a, a mean declination of 27 degrees and an inclination of uh, 52. So with that, we could compare our results to the GPTS. And then here you can see all the, uh, the inclination, declination and the VGP latitude that we calculated uh, compared to the GPTS. And then we see that Trindade complex sites, which are in this gray shade zone here, uh, they all fit well within the Gauss normal polarity, except by this one site here uh, that presents similarly to this the Moho Vermelho formation site that has like a transitional field. This site also could be it has ages of uh, 2.9, if I'm not mistaken, this is about 2.9. And it could be because of the error, it could be representing maybe a transitional field here with the Cayenne subchrome within Gauss. Uh, but what is interesting here, as I mentioned to you before, all the sites for the Desejado sequence, we unfortunately didn't have any data, but then for the Mohu Fermelho formation, we set the boundary, the, the lower limit at 1.2 million years because the flow that we measured a transitional field is this one of 760,000 years close to the limit, as I mentioned before. And then the flows stratigraphically below, they had normal polarities. So they could be both here in the Jaramillo uh, subchrome or the Cobb subchrome. But by the way that the inclination is shown like a progressive uh, change, uh, we assigned them to like 1.2 and around 1 million years ago, and also by the stratigraphic positions. And the other uh, site from Vermelho Formation, which is this one here, and has 230,000 years, it is within the Bruinis normal chrome. So that's okay that it was normal. And then the Valad formation, you can see in this yellow shaded zone right here, it's all within the Bruinis, just like the Paredon Volcano formation, the this pinkish one here, also within the Bruinis. So the main thing that I wanted to accomplish with this PhD was to propose a chronostratigraphic chart. Of course, I didn't present all of my data for this, but <clears throat> here in this presentation, but it's going to be in my dissertation. And this is what we can get from our final results. So basically the Trindade complex unit formed through a Sertzeian, through magmatic and the emplacement of subvolcanic bodies of dominantly uh, phonolithic composition and the sites that we measured fit very well within the Gauss chrome, then the desejado formation formed up to around 1.5 million years with vo a volcanian eruptive styles with periods of effusive activity producing the thick pahoyhoy flows that we observe <clears throat> and with a phonolithic to nephilimitic composition and this would be interesting if we could get some paleomag here because for sure we would get the reverse the reverse field, right? Um, but then the Moho Vermelho formation started to form at around 1.2 million years um, through a Hawaiian Strombolian eruptive style, just like the Paredon Volcano in the Valado formation. And it encompasses part of the Matuyama and in this, ends up in the Bruins. And then the Valado and Paredon volcano are restricted to the Bruins. And what I wanted to say is that having this preliminary, this paleomag data, now we are comfortable with going forward and investigating the paleo, paleo intensity. So these are the next steps uh, of our research and actually Wellington, which is my co-author, he's already uh, working. He has already done some of the, the Pell intensity measurements and working on the the paper. So that's that's pretty nice because 
um, the only data that we have for the South Atlantic is the St. Helena Island, which is a time span of 10 million years to 8 million years. There's which like, so that's all. Then there's Trindade, which we can have from 3 million years up to a couple thousand years and have the intensity of the paleomagnetic field. So I'm very excited to see what Wellington is coming up with and just stay tuned. <laughs> um, so I would like to acknowledge all the financial institutions involved in this work and the institutions that I supported us somehow. So here it goes. And thank you very much for having me today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Natalia. I think we can all uh, join in a, a virtual round of applause for um, a really interesting uh, talk. Thank you very much. So I can open up the um, the floor to questions. Uh, if you want to, to uh, raise your hand um, via Zoom or um, type away in the chat, that's absolutely fine. Well, if nobody's going to jump in at a question, I will jump in. I will jump in at the start. And you mentioned just there at the end um, the work from from um, uh, Saint Helena, which yes. is a little bit of an older age. Um, but so one of the things that 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 they noticed there was that the um, dispersion, so the 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 secular variation, paleo secular variation, was quite high for a relatively low latitude. Have you used your directional data to to look at um, PSV for for Trinidad Island? No, but I should. <laughs> so that's good that you talk. I'm like very happy to present here today because as I'm about to like submit the manuscript, it's good to get feedback from Kalumag. So that's a great suggestion. I'm gonna take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I mean. I mean some of the the older directions from the Gauss, you know, it seemed a little a reasonable amount of variation in those um, yeah. directions. So mm -hmm. um, there might be might be something there to 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 relate back. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, we've got a question from from Andre Kostarov. I do. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. C can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I had time to check my my, my microphone. Uh, thank you, Natalia, for this uh, interesting talk and this exotic place to to show us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was curious about your uh, about your plot of uh, directions and VGPs taken all together. If if you can show us uh, once yes, once more, of course, uh, you get the VGP latitude, which is systematically much less than nine, uh, let's say ninety degrees. And uh, how do you interpret uh, all, uh, this uh, this polarity as normal or as normal? Because it's uh, it's far from normal, I would say. Because uh, yeah. they, they, okay, let 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 me put it this way: for the last three million years, you expect uh, if if your field were dipol dipolar, you you would expect that uh, the UVGP latitude would be somewhere near the pole, uh, right? And yeah, you, you, you never have you you never have it near the pole. And uh, is it not an error uh, in calculation or whatever? Uh, how do you explain this? Well, it could be an error in calculation, but like I don't know if I got your your question very well. Like, if no, uh, if you have the the, the BGP latitude should be yes. ninety degrees or something like that. Uh, if we, if we take this Van Damme cutoff of uh, forty five, you you would be systematically on the verge of this cutoff with all your uh, all your sides, and this is this is really uh, kind of surprising, uh, kind kind of surprise to me. Mm -hmm. And okay. Let let us put it this way. What is the expected inclination uh, in this at the site? The expected inclination of the sites. Uh, the, okay, let's say what is the I, IGRF inclination you you would expect? Uh, 
in let's say in, in the present day field today yeah do you know no uh, okay i'm sorry that's okay no that's okay because yeah, yeah, yeah. like honestly i have to be honest of course like, yeah i'm the first author with this of this paper and uh i'm a volcanologist uh, yes, with I, some paleo I mag agree, but uh, okay, so, uh, your oh, should, should, yeah. should have uh, uh, should have me. tell you <laughs> uh, have told you that uh, you need to che check your directions first yeah uh, okay yes of course yes, of course it's, it's fine it's fine work and a very hard work i believe uh, yeah uh, it but, was very uh, hard work you need you need to uh, you you need to be, uh, understand your what you get. I would say sorry. Yes, yes, sorry yes. if I may, uh, may. It it may feel as uh, mm -hmm. insult or whatever. No, 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 no. But, uh, I I'm not insulted yeah, at all. But you, uh, it's really a kind of surprising that uh, you you show all this direct you show all these directions and all. To me, they all would have. Uh, let's say if true if, if those uh, vgp latitudes are correct then uh -huh. it would mean they all they are all near transitional let's say that was okay. a okay a really kind so of surprise to me probably probably the vgp latitudes well are, are not I, correct i would not take about uh, i, I Okay, I I would agree about the extreme which is at uh, between the uh, which is at uh, two hundred and sixteen. That uh, that uh, that is really out of uh, out of uh, normal uh, in your study in your study. That would be trans transitional, but all the rest uh, are kind of transitional too. If if the if the calculation is correct. Okay, I got point. it. Yeah. Okay, I got it. So yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna yeah, yeah, I'm gonna check the VGP latitude calculations yes. because yes. I've done these calculations using the Remasoft software. Yeah. That, that my okay, but you really have to check. I would say. Yes, I will do. I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you have that submitted, I, I I'm pretty sure every uh, well every reviewer would tell you that. We we'll check that. Okay. Yeah, please. Because yeah. um, for you, you think that all of the VGP latitudes should be close to each other because they would represent one pole. Yes, yeah, that, that's that, that's a, a Excel Excel dipole hypothesis after all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, <laughs> sure. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thanks for your comment. Great, so great. We yeah. have a, a a question in chat from uh, Friedrich Heller who's asking: Have you looked at the um, EMS data? Um, is there the possibility of having fabric uh, in some of your uh, samples? Yes, yes, I've checked that. And actually, we do have a reverse fabric in some of, si of the sites. Um, I have done, um, it's actually published the study with the Paradon Volcano and the Morro Vermelho Formation. They do have one or two sites with reverse fabric. Yeah, that's. Uh, so we've got time for uh, another quick question. If anybody has one, throw your hands up or throw something into the chat. If not, um, I'll thank uh, Natalia again for another um, uh, really good presentation. We can give another mm -hmm. uh, round of applause and uh, thank you very much for, yeah. for, for the, the talk. So um, thank you very much again for having me. And I really appreciate the feedback and the discussions because like I'm really learning <laughs> Paleo Mag. So that's awesome. Thank you, Andre Andre, for your for the discussion. I'll chat chat right. chat no, to my co authors. Yeah. That's perfect. I mean, this this is what this is kind of part of what we want magnets to be is a, 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 a forum for people to to be able to share their ideas and 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 um, present their things that are um, in an informal way and get a, a range of feedback and so really pleased that that, that you're you're happy with all this sort of feedback that you've gotten here mm -hmm. um just before everybody uh disappears 
Um, a reminder that we have um, a range of seminars um, uh, lined up for the rest of the year. So in a couple of weeks, we'll have uh, John Mound from University of Leeds. Uh, we have presenters at the end of September and into October. I'll not tell you who yet until they've actually said definitively yes, but we've certainly got people lined up. Um, but as always, um, all of our uh, videos and past presentations are available on our YouTube channel. So please um, catch up with magnets there. And we look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much, everyone.